So I just want everyone to take a second and think about possibly what is the cheapest form of shelter out there to live in. Maybe a hut, or maybe a teepee, or it could possibly be a cave, really, is um, what I'm thinking is the cheapest form of shelter. It's made by nature. You just walk up into a cave and you can go in and get protection from the rain or whatever else is out there. But there is a little bit of a problem with caves, and that's the fact that you don't find them everywhere. You know, if you go into sub-Saharan Africa, you don't just find a cave every few miles. It's, um, it's a rarity out there. So, but they do have a lot of dirt. They have a lot of sand. And really the only thing needed to make a structure left is, is a bag. Um, so you might think, what is an earth bag? Well, we'll start out simple. What is earth? We all know earth can be dirt, sand, soil, clay, whatever else. Uh, my geotech professor does not like me calling earth dirt, but that's what it is. Next, what is a bag? A polypropylene bag. Just any old regular uh, bag that can be used to transport rice, beans, corn. Um, you've all seen them. And you put them together and you have an earth bag. It's very simple. So you'll take these bags and you'll stack them on top of each other as such. And you put barbed wire in between to make sure there's no sheer movement. And you have an earth bag house. After that, you'll put an adobe plaster on the outside of the house to protect it from the elements. And, uh, and then it's waterproof. And it's a home. So where did these come from? Um, the idea, actually, the, uh, the name of this type of earth bag building is called Super Adobe. And as you can kind of see, it came from Adobe, which is um, a building technique that a lot of you know, uh, Arizona and New Mexican Indians would use to, to build their houses, and they're still standing today. Um, you also might have seen sod houses out in the Great Plains. Those are, that's very old. I think that picture was taken in the 1800s of some uh, time. Or even military bunkers. Or what about flood control? You see this kind of technology, if you will, used in places all around, even today. But the fact of them being used as an actual house was developed by this man right here, Nadar Khalili. And he was from Iran. And what, what happened was, is he was approached by NASA to come up with some type of structure to put on the moon. They wanted to start building buildings there and habitats. And so he came up with this idea of taking these plastic bags and blowing um, lunar dust into them and it becoming a structure up there. Anyways, the, the whole thing kind of flopped. I don't know if it was for financial reasons or whatever, but um, they ended up needing this type of building for refugees at the Persian Gulf War. And so here's what some of those homes look like. They're very similar to a teepee, and they could be built in less than a day. Uh, so it was a very good way to, when these people needed a home, because they were pushed out of their own land, to just pop up one of these and let them live in it. A couple properties of earth bag homes that are similar to caves um, is the fact that what the fill material is inside each bag can determine how your house works, basically. So if you fill it with a dense clay material, you can get a thermal mass effect. So the sun heats the house up in the day, and then at the nighttime, the house radiates heat and will actually keep you warm. Or you can fill it with lighter materials like rice holes, uh, crushed volcanic rock, vermiculite, and that will make the house a very good insulator. So if you're in a colder climate, it, it will keep your hot air in, or it will keep your cool air in if you're in a very hot tropical climate. Here's a technique that changes the bag, actually, and as you can see, these bags used are just typical uh, fruit bags, and they have large holes in these bags, but it allows
allows you to not use the barbed wire, which I was talking about before, because the problem with the barbed wire is that in installing it, people get cut, you know, it's heavy, it's hard to transport. So uh, these people in Brazil came up with an idea of using this material because the soil will actually uh, go through these holes and adhere to itself. And so um, that's a, a pretty neat technique that's developing right now. And here's that home as it was finished. It's actually not a home. This was a, a children's school, I believe. And another cool thing about this is that these kids actually helped build it. Um, they were, would sit there and they would jump on the bags and crush them down. And so it's, a, it's definitely a community effort when putting one of these homes together. I believe that this house uh, had 15 full-time people working on it about eight hours a day, and it took them about two weeks to build. But these houses also don't have to be just for the poorer countries or for refugees. They can also be something that you could have yourself um, in a very nice, uh, architecturally um, elegant on the inside as well. You know, just however much you want to invest in it. It doesn't have to be just the cheapest form of housing. Um, they can also have multiple rooms. You can make them as big as you want. Uh, or even vertical walled buildings. That is something that's being uh, tested more and more is this vertical wall on these houses because a lot of testing has been done on the dome structures but not so much on the, the vertical walls and so that's still developing right now. And as you can see this, this plan for this house right here it just looks like a normal house. You could drive by and see in somewhere in Knoxville here. And so uh, an advantage to this house would obviously be that you have a foot of dirt as your insulated, insulating property on the wall. And so uh, that's a whole lot better than the, the blue foam you get from Lowe's or any of that. And it's cheaper. It's dirt cheap, really. <laughs> <laughs> so with technologies like these, if you can even call this a technology because this has been around for so long, you don't even need technology to, to make it. Um, but we need to start taking these things and, and, and ideas and using them to help sustain our earth because we can't keep cutting down trees uh, to build houses or you know, making blue foam from Lowe's or whatever it may be uh, and expect our earth to just keep up. Um, and so we need to be always searching for opportunities to advance, to recycle, and not just take you know, a can and throw it in the, in the recycling bin, but actually use that can that has already been you know, fabricated. Um, so as you can see, earth bag housing, it's definitely a, something to do now. <laughs> so thank you guys.